hi guys the control engineering geek is here today we are gonna take an example about how to draw root lockets our geek is happy now we have this transfer function or forward transfer function 1 over s s squared plus 5 s plus 6 we need to know uh, how the locus or uh, location of the poles and zeros are affected as we vary the gain k of the controller from zero to infinity first we're gonna take some system uh, information we need to know the number of the poles we have three poles here n equals to three uh, we have poles at zero minus three and minus two this means we will have three branches eventually we don't have any zeros so m equals to zero so the difference between the numbers of zeros and poles is three this means we have three zeros at infinity another information we need to know is the characteristic equation the characteristic equation is given by this equation here 1 plus k g h equal to 0 as we said before k is uh, varying from 0 to infinity this variation will uh, change the loca uh, location of the poles and zeros introduce the transfer function here and do some arrangement we're gonna have this form of the characteristic equation another last uh, piece of information we need is uh, the denominator and denominator of this uh, forward transfer function the denominator is 1 the denominator is s, uh, uh, s to the factor 3 plus 5 s squared plus 6 s and we need to know the differentiation of these denominator and denominator with respect to s this is given here okay let's go to the second step the asymptotist uh, we need to know the location of the asymptotist as well as the angles uh, that those asymptotists guide the branches of the locus to the infinity or to the uh, zeros at infinity the location of the asymptotist is given by this equations the algebraic sum of the poles minus the algebraic sum of the zeros uh, multiply by the difference between numbers of poles and zeros taking in the consideration uh, the information we got in the first step we can calculate this uh, equation here and we have this uh, number minus 1.67 which is the location of the asymptotist on the real axis we need to know the angles the angles is given by this equation 2k plus 1 over q multiplied by 180 degree k here k here is not the gain k is it just an integer that depends on the number of q since we have q is equal to 3 this k will uh, change from 0 to 2 so it's gonna have uh, values of 0 1 and 2 let say we that q is 4 then k will have the values of 0 1 2 and 3 okay let's look to our example here since q is 3 k will take the values of 0 1 and 2 introduce these values in two equations and you're gonna have the values of the angles of the asymptotist so if we take k equal to 0 introduce this equation you're going to get the degree of 60 put k equal to 1 we're going to get 180 and finally put k equal to 2 we're going to get an angle of 300 or minus 60 okay let's move to the next step break away and break in points on the real axis since we have three branches and we have uh, we we have zeros at infinity we need to, we do need to know uh, the points that the branches uh, 
uh, are breaking away from the real axis or breaking into the real axis. This is computed by the information we used in the first step uh, through this equation. As we say, so n is the nominator of this uh, forward transfer function. m is the uh, dominator of the forward transfer function. Whereas the hats is just the differentiation uh, of this dominator and nominator with respect to the variable, the Laplace variable s. Okay, introduce those values. We compute those values in the first step. We're gonna have this polynomial, second order polynomial, uh, solve for the roots. We're gonna have two real roots here. Okay. This is important, these two roots here. These two roots may be used in the uh, final form of the rockets. We may use both of them. We may use one of them. We may use none of them. Okay, this is depends on the uh, information uh, we got at the final uh, drawing, before the drawing. Okay, we have angle of the departure from the complex poles. Since we don't have any complex poles, we don't need to uh, draw or perform this step. Okay, this makes the gig happy. Uh, the angle of the arrival of the at the complex zeros. Also, we don't have complex zeros. We don't need to do this step as well. This makes the gig happy again. The final step is, is to find the locus cross the uh, that crosses the imaginary axis. Okay. This is done by using the Kerstic equation. Okay, uh, very simply, we can use the Routh criterion, Routh Hirwitz criterion. Do the table of the Routh Hirwitz criterion here. Uh, just remember that in the Routh Hirwitz criterion, the first column here, if you have a zero on this uh, anywhere in the first column. This may mean that we have a pure imaginary uh, pulse, okay? So we're gonna use, take advantage of this property here, and we uh, see the values of the k that makes um, any uh, item on the first column equals to zero. So we have this one here, okay? Th 30 minus k over five equal to zero. This makes the k equal to the, uh, 30 introduce this theory in the characteristic equation and then solve for the imaginary uh, sorry for the roots of this equation so we since it's a polynomial of third order it will have three roots one at minus five and two at pure imaginary at plus minus 2.45 j since we have two pure imaginary roots this means that the uh, branches uh, will cross the imaginary axis uh, at these two uh, roots or points. Okay, we haven't done yet. We may have k equal to zero also make this uh, a column has uh, an item of zero. So we'll take a consideration k equal to zero as well. Introduce this in this uh, characteristic equation and solve for the roots you're gonna get the poles that you already have when k equals to zero. This is not surprising. Therefore, we don't have any uh, cross when k equal to zero. Okay, let's summarize uh, the data we got so far. We have three poles, zero minus three minus one. We have no zeros. We have the subtotals that uh, goes uh, or uh, draws from minus 1.67 at angle 60 180 and 300 since we have three poles three branches we're gonna have three uh, we're gonna have three uh, angles here or three uh, asymptotes but uh, really those asymptotes depends uh, depend on the number of zeros that we have on on the infinity it doesn't depend on the poles the poles just give you number of branches however the number of the angles which is number of the q we have uh, in the example depends on the number of the zeros that we have at infinity those just guides or tells us how the branches go to infinity 
we have a break away and break in points at minus 2.5 uh, minus 0.78 no complex pole or zeros and we have uh, across uh, the imaginary uh, axis at min plus minus 2.45 j we need to put all these together on the uh, on the complex axis this makes the geek confused okay let me the, the geek uh, happy again draw the complex uh, co uh, complex uh, axis here we have the real axis imaginary axis uh, put the information you got so far from the sixth step we done before we have zeros uh, oh sorry poles at uh, zero minus two minus three we don't have poles draw the uh, point of the assumptive test at minus 1.67 then start drawing the assumptive test we have one at 60 uh, draw the assumptive test from the real axis and go uh, uh, counterclockwise we have at 60 this angle is 60 here we have another one at 180 this is 180 and we have another one at minus 60 or my, uh, plus th 300 this is minus 60 here or this is plus th uh, 300 add the other informations we have the break in or break uh, away points we have the cross with the imaginary axis as well okay at this point we need to know uh, one interesting point or one important point here is that the branches of the locus always uh, coming out from the uh, from the poles and go to the zeros so we have three poles here the branches has to the branches have to come out from the zeros uh, from the poles here so the three branches we take it from minus two here another one from minus uh, from zero they uh, meet at the take away point here and go to infinity they have to go to infinity and the guide for going to infinity is coming from the the assumptive we uh, calculated in the second step so the first branch goes to infinity that may come from zero or minus two and the other one also goes to infinity as well okay since we have three poles we need to have three branches this, these are just two branches we have another pole here at minus three so we have another branch that goes to infinity with the assumptive is at 180. what well, one last point to here is that uh, the road locus has to be symmetric about the real axis. it has to be symmetric about real axis so two points that are very important in drawing root lock take care about them for the first point is always coming out from poles and go whether this th these zeros are finite you can see it on the draw or they are at inverse and goes go to zeros this is the first point the point that is very important is since we are drawing a root locus for the variation of the parameter k uh, controller gain from zero to infinity is has or the, or the final draw has to be about the real axis okay so our geek is impressed now uh, you can use this very simple matlab code to draw this locus as well using uh, matlab See you in another video.